So let's move on to vision transformers. In 2020, 2021, there is this trend that people want to go beyond convolutional neural networks towards transformers. And transformers are invented for uh, natural language processing in the first place. And they replaced recurrent neural networks in that literature. Now there is a trend to do the same thing, try to replace convolutions. So there is this question, and we went actually through a couple of architectures using transformers. The question is, do they see the same way or do they see differently from a convolutional neural network? For that, we are gonna need to have some tools that we need to use. This tool is not from this paper, it's from another paper. And that's about trying to measure the similarity between two representations. And that's gonna be CKA, Centered Kernel Alignment. I'm gonna quickly go through it. Let's say you push M images, that's your mini batch size, through a neural network, and then stop at some particular layer. And that's gonna give you, for each example, that's gonna give you a P1 dimensional vector. Maybe you're flattening out your intermediate features. From a tensor, you're gonna turn it into a vector. This is one layer. You can go to the next layer. The same number of examples are gonna give you a different dimension, that particular layer. Or this could be two entirely different neural networks, maybe one ResNet and one VGG, or it could be one ResNet and one transformer, the intermediate features between them. And you want to compare these two. Obviously they have different dimensions, so it's not gonna be easy to compare them. You need some uh, pre-processing to do on these two matrices. What are you gonna do? You're gonna take X, multiply it by itself transpose. It's gonna end up being M times P1 times P1 times M. And that's gonna give you a matrix that is M by M dimensional. And let's call that K. And it has a name, it has gram matrix. And it's basically measuring how similar is this data point to another data point. That's what you're measuring. And then you create L the same way. Now K and L are gonna have the same dimension. Both of them are gonna be M by M matrices. That's cool. And then you're gonna create a matrix, a metric out of something that is called H sick between K and L, and then you're gonna normalize it. This is the same way that you're gonna normalize variance or covariance to give you correlation by dividing by the variances of every single uh, uh, random variable. It's the same thing here. So the most important one is what is this HSIC? First of all, this stands for Hilbert Schmidt Independence Criterion. So it's a criterion. There is this centering going on. So you're going to have a matrix H that is going to do the centering for you. So this is an exercise for you. Take H let it be two dimensional or two by two and multiply it by another matrix that is two by two. And your matrix could be A, B, C, D. And this one is this H matrix and see what's gonna happen. Where, where is the centering concept coming in? It's the same thing here. You take H, actually you take K, multiply it from left and right by H, you center it, you center L, that's gonna give you L prime. You vectorize both K, prime and L prime, basically you are flattening them. These are matrices, you're turning them into vectors. And then you divide by some scalar. This is properly chosen, it is similar to computing a variance. And that's gonna give you the similarity between the centered gram matrices. And that's exactly what you take and you're gonna put here. And this CKA is gonna have some nice properties. Like if you permute your neurons, if you permute these vectors, you're gonna end up with the same uh, number, with the same CKA. If you multiply uh, X by a scalar, if you scale it, this number is gonna end up being invariant. It's not gonna depend on the scale. So it has some nice properties as a metric. And that's what we're gonna use to compare a transformer to a CNN. What are the findings? Vision transformers have more uniform representations when you go from one layer to the next one. Here is evidence. If you compare layer zero to layer zero, it's going to have the highest uh, CKA score. If you compare layer zero to layer 20, it is still high. And when I say high, it, has, it is relatively speaking, relatively speaking to what you see from a 
ResNet. And this pattern goes up in the entire layer. If you take 40 or if you take zero, it's going to be less and less relevant or similar to the last layer. But for vision transformer, it is still more similar. You still have some bright colors up there. This checkerboard pattern is because for the transformer architecture, you have some attention mechanism. On top of it, you have some fully connected layer and then there is a residual connection. And whenever these are less similar is because of those, or it's because of those fully connected layers on top of them. But every once in a while, they're gonna end up being very similar to each other. Vision transformers are based on attention and it makes sense. They're gonna incorporate more global information about your image. This pixel is gonna pay attention to this last pixel here by construction. It is more global. CNNs are more local. They are gonna look at the window of your image and then focus on that. And then to actually write the formulas down for it, make it more robust and mathematical, you can look at the concept that is called effective receptive field, because for a convolutional neural network, you can actually compute the receptive field analytically. You have a five by five convolution on top of that. You have a three by three, another three by three, and then you're gonna be able to compute what the pixel in one of your output is gonna look at in the input image. For computing the effective receptive field, you're gonna pick one pixel from one of your layers, intermediate layers, take its derivative with respect to every single pixel in your image. And then the ones that have a low magnitude, they're not gonna correspond to your effective receptive field. They don't affect this pixel that much. And that's how you know your vision transformers are actually looking more globally while ResNet is looking more locally. And then from one layer to, next, to the next layer, these receptive fields are gonna grow. It turns out that actually incorporating those local information that are intrinsic to CNNs are really important. And we saw that if you train a vision transformer or large on larger and larger data sets, these sorts of patterns are gonna show up in the first few layers. They're gonna end up being more local throughout the training once the training is done. Skip connections are really important for vision transformers performance compared to ResNet. And they are the reason that you have these similarities up until the end of, the, of your neural network, up until the last layer. We are gonna later on in the course use vision transformers for object detection segmentation. For those sorts of applications, it is very important to know the boundaries and the fine details of your image. It turns out that vision transformers are actually capable of doing that, incorporating those spatial information in your image. And the last point, as you increase the data set size, your transformers are gonna get better and better because they are gonna learn to behave like a convolution. Those invariances that are already built in, in a convolution are inherent in your data and then you're gonna learn them the more data you show to a transformer. So transformers are thirsty for data. So I'm gonna stop here. And for those of you who have questions, you can stay and ask. For those of you who want to leave, you can leave.